So, let's talk shoes. Okay, as many of you know, I really like minimalist shoes. I like Hirachis. I like shoes that don't have a lot of mass to them. I like my feet to be light and to function and articulate in the way human feet are made to do so. And because of that, Zero Shoes is one of my most favorite manufacturers. So they sent me this thing called the Oswego. And I've had Iparihanas for quite a while. I ran them into the dirt, separated the soles, and destroyed them. And not because they weren't robust, but because I was abusive. I, I spent part of a summer cutting a, 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 a line for a trail. Um, I, I spent a bunch of time running in it. I used them just constantly for my normal everyday shoes. And like shoes do, they died. So I got these new Oswegos from Zero Shoes. I've already peeked in here but I wanted to do a bit of an unboxing so that you can see what is coming out. These guys right here are amazing and make me happy. Now, one really cool thing about the Zero Shoe is the fact that it's basically like a Hirachi, which is a, this is just my opinion here, which is a uh, Northern Mexico trail shoe that they make out of rubber or um, rubber and straps. So if you look at this, you can kind of see, here's, here's the rubber base, here's the bottom, here are the straps, and those straps are integrated into the shoe. So as you tighten up on the laces, it snugs up the strap, which has an effect downstream, if you will, to the whole shoe. So there's a connection point here, a strap going through the base, and then as you pull on this string, it tightens it up all around instead of just locking it down in one spot, which is really nice. Um, the other shoes that I had basically did the same thing. Now, these shoes, you can run in them. I don't think Zero sells them as a running shoe, but I run and I like to run in shoes. So I am gonna take this shoe and run up the side of the mountain and show you how they work. Um, a little more discussion about the shoe itself. It's kind of like putting on a, uh, a sock. I know some people like to wear shoes without socks. I'm not a fan of that, just because your shoes get boogery, if you will. But you could do that with these shoes. They're very, very much like a sock that's integrated into a, uh, a minimalist Hirachi shoe. Now, one thing about minimalist shoes in general, they are kind of like being barefoot with a little sliver of ground that stays attached to your foot so that you don't get your skin penetrated with rocks or thorns or those kind of things. Now this isn't gonna stop everything, but it'll, start, it'll stop what matters. The value to that is as you step on rocks, your foot can still stretch and manipulate and contort to feel and sometimes like I'll be running, I'll feel my toes kind of grip onto a rock, That's especially when I'm hiking up something. There's your turf right there, and it gives your your ability, the uh, your foot, the ability to have the full flex and torsion to run with it, to twist. Like if you're gonna you're running straight and you want to veer to the left, your foot does kind of one of these things. In a normal shoe, it, it's kind of like standing on a platform. The problem with that is your foot doesn't get the flex it needs, therefore it doesn't get the training. And if it doesn't get the training, you end up with weaker, flat feet, feet that are incapable of handling the abuse that you put them through, which means incapable of holding up to that abuse. So another thing that's really cool about these shoes specifically and about Zero in general, is you can take this little puppy and roll it right up stick it in a bag, stick it in a dry bag, stick it in a sack, whatever you want, and have a full spare pair of shoes on the go wherever you want. 
And then the last thing I'm going to note about them, Zero kind of did the thing that everyone wished would happen, which is transition from a sandal to a shoe. So this gives you the ability to wear a shoe at work, to, to wear a minimalist shoe at work, to wear something that you would live in, in places that you have to go, not places that you want to go, like your work, your school, those type of things. So they kind of transition with that. Anyway, enough talking about these. I'm going to go out and I'm going to use them. see it, but there's a rabbit right there. There she goes. A little cottontail. If I was hunting and I had a stick, I'd get it. There's a rabbit right there. He's barely missed it. Okay, the sun is setting. I'm gonna run some more. I don't wanna stop running, but I gotta talk about these guys before the day is done. Let's talk about these guys. There they are. I ran through some, man, I don't know what that stuff is. It was some sort of chalky something. It's like granite, no, gypsum maybe? I should know. It's a gypsum pile or something. And uh, there those guys are. So, a couple things. They run a little small. If you wear a, t a 10 and a half, get 11, you know, a little half size bigger. Now, having said that, I've got some kind of meaty feet because when I started going minimalist or when I started going uh, barefoot, really, um, my feet got more muscly and the pads on my feet got bigger. So this part of my feet got wider and my big toe has always been like a half size bigger than the rest of my foot. So kind of see that. So in, in all fairness, now, they might fit your feet. I would suggest getting a half size bigger. Um, my first pair I ordered, again, this is the second pair I've, I've ordered, but my first pair of this kind that I got, I had to ask for a half size bigger, and they were just amazing. I mean, I, they immediately sent me a return label and shipped them off to me super fast. So their, their customer service is outstanding. Um, so, again, I'm, I'm running over some decent rocks. I mean, you guys can see those down there. It's pretty much gravel spree. It's like granite mountains that I'm running through right here. So there's some, there's some sharp ones and you, you kind of feel them when you find the sharp ones, but for the most part, you can cruise through just about any kind of gravel. So you can still feel the ground for sure. Um, you still got to pay attention where you're stepping, but you don't have to freak out if you're going to run over thorns and your feet aren't going to get cut up. So these are about as close to no shoes as you can, as you can come. I want to briefly talk about just minimal issues and I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm not anything special so I'm just going to use my empirical experience, my personal experience. So I was in the military for years, decades, two or more, a long time and uh, I'm still in and uh, when I first started the military the leather boots they gave us broke in our feet. Our feet didn't break in the boots. And through part of that process, my feet kind of became flat, specifically my left foot. And I started getting lower spine issues. And in Afghanistan, I slipped two discs pretty hardcore and uh, got some disability for it, which is all good and fine and dandy and all that. But um, I looked for ways to repair it because I knew if I continued down that path, I was going to end up having to get fusion 
and about five years after a fusion is another fusion and another fusion and they just creep up your back and I don't want to play that game so I looked into physical therapy um, I looked into the military offered it and I chose not to go because there was a six month backlog and I didn't want to step in front of someone else so I looked into what I could do on my own and I integrated proper form front squats deadlifts and extension extension chain exercises back exercises to strengthen my back and I also looked into minimalist shoes or shoes with zero degree tilt on the heel right because essentially when you're standing appropriately on your heels you stand flat foot you're okay as soon as you pick your heels up your body tilts forward and that puts stress on the spine in the specific spot that I had issues with so I looked into moccasins I looked into hirachis I looked into zero shoes and I found some military shoes that have no cushion there's just a thin layer of rubber I have these zero shoes I have plenty of other shoes I made shoes shoe shoe shoes and ended up correcting the damage that I have I got a teeter table which holds me upside down and stretches my back I got a sauna which helps release the muscles I do front squats and deadlifts and almost every one of my workouts I run a ton and I wear shoes that don't have a rise to them there's still a little cushion um, and zero shoes fit the bill for this perfect now because of that I really have zero back pain. I think it's essentially repaired however if I start wearing boots with heels on them again by the end of the day in some instances my back is wrecked and it's in pain so all I can tell you is my flat feet went away, my, my feet strengthen up, my feet articulate better and twist better. Like if I were to show you these guys right here, if I, if I can find me a rock, right, the front part of my foot will articulate and wrap completely around that rock, right? If I catch it with the heel, it wraps forward. If I catch this angle, it wraps to the left, right, right? And because of that stretching as I run to stretch the muscles back into place and because of the fact that it has to hold its own arch up, it essentially repaired the damage that I'd done to my feet and my back. That's my story. I hope that your story is similar. If you're thinking about minimalist shoes, I highly suggest it. But it's like a super hot, hot tub. Ease your way in. When I first switched to mental mess shoes, I was running about eight miles a morning, almost every morning. And the first day I tried those Vibram five fingers and about a mile and a half into it, I had to turn around and I couldn't run for a week because it was just like when I took my cast off after having a broken arm, my feet had been supported for so long that holy crap, I've got a bunch of new muscles and I've got some, some stretching and some pain. So I think, when people transition to minimalist, minimalist shoes, like I guess my measurement would be one eighth of the distance you're doing normal or less, and then slowly add to it. By the end of that summer, I was doing seven or eight miles with no shoes on regularly. And it just took a little bit of stretching and it just took a little bit of time to break in. That is my story. And thank you for watching T-Jack Survival. <laughs>